couple of weeks, we are discussing to the big and main event of all gaming, which we waited for all year long, E3 2021. We all know there's going to be a lot of big gaming companies coming this year, and we'll be participating, such as Square Enix, Capcom, Bandai Namco, Xbox, WB Games, and especially one and the one and only, Nintendo. We all know Nintendo is really one of the big highlights when it comes to revealing things, and there might be at least an announcement for a E3 presentation of a Nintendo Direct since that's what they usually do every year that is until last year came but we're not going to talk about that so this that's why in this video i'm going to be predicting of what sort of games and announcements they'll be showing off in this year's e3 event for nintendo specifically now usually whenever i do this sort of thing i mostly get out a sketch or some sort of like a sketch or of drawings of what i actually would personally like to see but given the fact that there really isn't much i can predict this year and i all can and i can only predict things that everyone is talking about with a mix of things that I personally would like to see for this year's event if Nintendo is going to be announcing a Nintendo E3 presentation. So, with all that out of the way, let's not waste time, but let's get straight into it. Okay, let's first stop. Start off with like you know, let's just let's just get the obvious out of the way. DLC number ten. I'm not. Well, we all know that Smash Ultimate is gonna make a huge present this year since that's kind of what they've been doing for a lot for like the Smash Ultimate DLC lineup. And as for DLC ten, who could it honestly be? I don't really want to predict it. It, but I would honestly like to say it could either be a third party or a first party. Most likely a third party because from what I've seen from the Smash community's reactions, most of them really doesn't really like a first party character, even though Nintendo, even though Smash Ultimate is a Nintendo game and all of things around. But anyways, as I was trying to say, a third party character is either a big one or a somewhat minor one. All we can say is that obviously DLC 10 is going to make a huge appearance, while DLC 11 might at least come out maybe somewhere between November. That all I can say, that's all I can say, given the fact that this second fighters pass does not end before December 31st, 2021, which is like the end of the year. So we might at least expect it for DLC 11 to come out either on November or December. While as DLC 10, it could either be coming out next month after E3 or maybe on August. Those are the most likely ones for the characters itself. It could be a third party. Most people predict it's Crash, which I do agree. Most people predict it could be unexpected. I also agree, and a lot of things, it's either Sora, Dante, I also agree, there's a lot of characters at this point, all I can say is that I want Nintendo and Sakurai to surprise us as best as they can, and see what sort of characters they've chosen, that's all I can say about it. Now let's talk about a bit of Pokemon in this game, in this in this video. Since the fact that Pokemon Legends Arceus is coming out on January 2022, which is kind of earlier than we expected, we might at least see a big highlight for Nintendo's E3 like presentation. Though Pokemon and Game Freak usually does their own presentations. Because, like, you, usually whenever Pokemon does something, they mostly announce their own games and such by their own presentations. So, we might at least see a Pokemon Presents before the event of E3 2021, showing up a few highlights such as the Diamond and Pearl remakes, and especially Legends of Arceus, and maybe after they show up what's going to be in this game, since Pokemon Legends Arceus is the first ever Pokemon game to be an open-world RPG with not, with, with not having the same mechanic like catching Pokemon, just the only usual RPG event. Instead, it's more of the mix of RPG and action and a mix of open world itself. This was the first Pokemon game to actually have this sort of thing, so it is really obvious to see Pokemon Legends Arceus to make some sort of appearance, maybe in their own Pokemon Presents, and, and also make an appearance and highlight in Nintendo's E3 Direct. Now, I am not entirely sure if this is possible, but maybe we could at least see a better look of what Splatoon 3 might look like. We've already gotten a bit of an announcement of what the game is going to be like back in the February Nintendo Direct, and it does show some sort of a wasteland, and they show up brand new hairstyles and new weapons, but I personally would like to see Splatoon 3 make some sort of a big highlight, maybe not show everything, maybe just show a bit of the story mode and what they might have to offer, maybe actually have some new game mode, like honestly, 
guys, I'm going to be very honest. I personally never played Splatoon. Well, I only played a bit of the first Splatoon game. I never got to play Splatoon 2 because there's a lot of things going on. But Splatoon 3, this might be a good chance for me to come back to the series and all. So I would personally like to see what sort of story they might have since it does take place in some sort of like a giant wasteland. So I really like to see what Nintendo shows this off. Now, this is something I personally would like to see, and that is something to do with the brand new Sonic the Hedgehog 2022 game. I know that Sega is going to have a big involvement in this year's event, but maybe if Sega might show their own presentation, maybe they can show off this brand new Sonic, new Sonic 2022 game, because there's a lot of questions that really need to be answered, like, what's that symbol? What are these weird, like, like weird particles? Is this, is this new Sonic? Is this new Sonic's power or something like that? Where is Sonic even running at? And, I mean, there's a lot of questions and maybe Nintendo could possibly make a highlight with this game as well since this game is also going to be coming to the Nintendo Switch oh yeah and maybe they could maybe show a bit of a highlight of Sonic Colors Ultimate because that's pretty much what Sonic is going to be this year since this is also Sonic's 30th anniversary there's a lot of 30 there's a lot of anniversaries that I really don't want to talk about but it is a really good time to see that Sonic maybe this new Sonic game could big, big, make a good big highlight and show up the release date maybe it's early 2022 spring 2022 maybe summer 2022 that's all I can say about this and this is what I personally would like to see from Nintendo and Sega now here's another game that I actually have mixed feelings with, and that has something to do with Metroid. Metroid, like Metroid, like Metro Prime 4, like it has been delayed. Well, it hasn't been delayed. It's more like restarted. The game was announced back in E3 2017, and after a couple years, there hasn't been any sort of big news lately. That is until Nintendo has announced that Metro Prime 4 has announced that that game has been restarted and given the project to Retro Studios, who are the same company who also made Metroid Prime and also the modern Donkey Kong. Country games. So it is really great to see that Retro Studios, and maybe this could be the time for whether Metro Prime 4 gets announced or there could be a Metro Prime Switch trilogy. Since I did hear an ex producer or like an ex worker of Retro Studios has stated that there it might not be possible for Metro Prime trilogy coming on the Switch due to the fact that I don't know, it's, it's something to do with the motion controls. But given the fact that Skyward Sword HD has motion controls and they were able to implement it, I don't see the issue issue when it comes to Metro Prime Trilogy on the Switch. Maybe if not, they'd, maybe they could announce other things such as, my, I don't know, Metro Federation Port Force or Metro Prime Samus Returns or something like that. All I can say is that they're gonna at least show off some sort of big Metro news. That's really what I can say since it has been quite a very long time since we've gotten any sort of details or any sort of updates regarding it. Next up, let's talk about Zelda stuff. We all know this year is not only the 30th anniversary of Sonic, but also the 35th anniversary of the Legend of Zelda franchise. So let's first off start off with Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity's DLC expansion pass. We all know that the first wave is going to come out to like next month, which also features two characters, Robbie and Pura, who were teased in this in this in the teaser back in February. But we also like to see a lot of new challenges, some weapon types, and also some challenging enemies, and maybe a tease of what Wave Two is. Is gonna be like since it does come out on November 2021 but then again maybe they might not show it and show out off in like another Nintendo Direct presentation maybe in August or September before the bit before they show off wave 2 of DLC expansion pass that's really another highlight since it does come out next month with the first wave and we've already gotten the bonus costume with it as well for Link so that's really all I can say when it comes to a expansion pass of Age of Calamity now, what can be more obvious than all than hot like Skyward Sword HD? Skyward Sword HD comes out a month later after E3, so it is really obvious that this is going to be one of the highlights, and this might be a really big time because I did hear recently that Nintendo stated that this is really the most important Zelda game because I remember that when it came out for the Wii back in 20, 2000, I think it was 2011, it really didn't go well, and then when it came out on the Wii U, it really didn't go well as well. So that really means that the Switch and this game as well would sell the Zelda Skyward Sword HD and a brand new amiibo which everyone doesn't like because that is the only compatible amiibo that will be that will be used in this game all we can say is that this is the most important Zelda game that really can be can be you know possibly save this game as well and not only that this comes out next month so this is obviously going to be a highlight 
But there is another thing I like to discuss, and that has something to do with the rumored Z Zelda Twilight Princess and Wind Waker HD. These two games for both came out on the Wii U back then, but get but the fact that these games were rumored to come out on the Switch is pretty odd and interesting because these games were rumored to be announced in a couple months back after Zelda Skyward Sword HD was announced. And the thing is, is that this is a very interesting one. Zelda and both Twilight Princess and Wind Waker, like I said, both came out on the Wii U. So the the fact that they both ported them again is a bit interesting. Now, why are they port? Now, why were they rumored in the first place? Well, that's because someone on Twitter stated that they will see this reveal in a few months after some sort of a question when it comes to this. So I really like to see that all three Zelda games, Skyward Sword HD, Twilight Princess, and Wind Waker could come on the Switch because that's just something they might really do. Because I mean, all these ga all these three games came back in the Wii U, so it might be obvious to see them once again on the Switch as well. And now for the big highlight, the one game that everyone has been waiting for when it comes to the Zelda franchise, Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. It has been, what, two years since 2019? It has been two years since the announcement of this game coming out, and the only time we ever got in the tease first from, was from Aonuma back in the February Nintendo Direct, where he does stated that there will be some sort of big news and updates regarding Breath of the Wild 2 this year, which I think the most likely factor is E3 2021. That is a really obvious thing for Nintendo and the Zelda franchise to come because the thing is there like I said It has been exactly two years almost two years since the announcement of Breath of the Wild 2 So it is a really good perfect timing for that to happen Aonuma did say that they are working very hard on the game and I do like to see what the story might go I mean we might we might actually see what Breath of the Wild game it might look like I wonder what the story will lead up to I want to see everything else I really want to see and you know might get into the Zelda franchise since I'll let you know right away I've never played Zelda before the only time I played Zelda was in Spirit Track so this might be a good chance but maybe that'll do that after I play maybe Skyward Sword HD and then I might get into Breath of the Wild 2 and the release date for this game though I'm not entirely sure it could be the winter of 2021 game or it could come out next year I know waiting next year is a big pain but we all have to wait for Splatoon 3 to come out next year that's all I can say when it comes to the sequel of Breath of the Wild but before we end uh, there's one one more thing I like to discuss. And the last highlight that I want to talk about was the Nintendo Switch Pro. Like I said in that one video, the Nintendo Switch Pro is the most heavily speculated and highly anticipated console that the Nintendo ones want, that the Nintendo fans want from Nintendo. Given the fact that from recent events going on with the Bloomberg report and Emily Rogers saying that there might be some sort of an announcement and could possibly be revealed more sooner than we think and could re really release somewhere between like September or October. All I can say this guys is that don't don't get your hopes up. I know the Nintendo Switch Pro is a really big console, and we haven't gotten any sort of other consoles aside from the Nintendo Switch Lite, which came out back in 2019, which ma makes everyone think that the Nintendo Switch Pro being announced this year's E3 would be a good time announcement, which that I do agree. But to be honest, all I can say is that don't get your hopes up, and we might at least see it maybe in this year's E3. But if they don't, if they don't announce it, you know that's fine. I'm glad that Nintendo. Might, I'll I'll be t I'll be taking a one. Nintendo might show off and announce in this possible E3 Nintendo Direct and really just don't get your hopes up. That's all I can say. I know I said it a few times, but I know Nintendo fans can be a bit crazy. That's really all I can say. But with all that out of the way, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below of what you all are expecting for this year's E3 Nintendo Direct or some sort of E3 event. I don't know. I want to know all your opinions down below. What games do you think you are expecting and who do you think DLC number 10 for Smash Ultimate's DLC Fighters Pass Volume 2 could be, like I said, I'm I'm not gonna sure, I'm not gonna predict who it is. I just want to say it's that it could either be a third party and it could be a big one or a small one. That's all I can say. But with all that out of the way, leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the get hit the notification button for more videos, follow my Twitter, and remember this: once a legend, always a legend.